Hi, this is Gary with MacPost.com. Let me show you some creative uses for tables in Pages documents. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than 2,000 supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you could read more about it. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. Now, when you think of using tables in a numbers word processing document, you probably think of tabular data. And that's probably what most people use them for. But you can actually get really creative with tables. For instance, you can just use them as a simple way to lay out items on a page. I'll go and click on the table button in the top toolbar here and create the most ordinary table like that. Then I'm going to go and format table and let's turn off alternating row color there. So all the squares look the same. And then I'm going to click on the number of columns adjustment there. And I'm going to click on the number of rows adjustment there and set it to two by two. Now, as long as I see these little squares, I can actually drag and adjust the size of the whole table. If you're inside of a cell, you can't see those. So click outside, click the table just once, and you get to see those squares. Then you can adjust this like that and create these little areas and you can just add things into them. So I can just type four things here. Maybe this could be a whole paragraph of text. I can just select the entire table again and go to Format and then Table. If I use the row and column size here, I can set precise measurements. So let's say I want it to be two by two for every cell so they're perfectly square. And then I can go to Text here and I can not only center the text horizontally but I could center it vertically as well like that. So now you get a layout like that which is definitely a lot harder to create with shapes and text boxes. And also if you select the entire table and you go to Cell, you could change the border. So I'm going to select all borders here and then change the style for all borders to no border. So now you can see what it looks like. It's just four words perfectly arranged like this. And now I can grab the entire table and adjust it and set this up as I like. And of course I'm doing a two by two grid here but it could be any size you want. It just makes it really easy to lay out information in a grid without having to mess with text boxes and guides and all of that. Next, let's say that you've got a list of data. Here are some names here. And you want to alphabetize them. There's no good way to do that in Pages except if it's in a table. So you can select all of this and I'm going to go to Edit Cut to put it in the clipboard and also get rid of it. I'm going to create a simple table here. Then I'm going to select the first cell like this and then do Command V to paste. And you can see it pastes all the names there. I don't need all these other rows so I'll get rid of them like that. Once it's in a table, I can click right here at the top of the first column and I can sort. So I can sort all of these names like that. So now I get a sorted list. And I can go back into here, change this to have non-alternating rows. I could go into Cell and I can get rid of all the borders if I don't want to see the borders like that. And I could just have a table of data here. You can also use this to randomize things. If you want these to be in a random order, I'm going to add another column here and in this column I'm going to put a simple formula. I type the equals key like that and I'm going to type rand like that and that's the only part of the formula. That puts a random number between 0 and 1. I'm going to copy that, double click on B here and then paste and it pastes the random formula in all of these. So it's just a random number there. Now if I click here in row B and I sort here, it sorts by these random numbers thus randomizing the first column. And I can now click here again and delete this column. And now I've got the names in a random order. Now here's something that is tabular data but it's not necessarily what you would think of when doing a table. It's a glossary. So I've just got the first column with the term and the second column with the definition. And you can adjust the column widths like that. So I need less space here for the term than for the definition. I make the entire thing very narrow like that if I want. As long as you have Format, Arrange, and then Object Placement set to Move with Text so it's actually inserted in the body text of a word processing document, then the table will flow from one page to the next. So you can have this at the end of a document and cover many pages on one table. Note that if you do change to Stay on Page and use that as the layout, then it's only on one page. So you can see how it ends at the end of this page. And you can customize this if you don't like how it looks like a table. Go into Table here. I'll get rid of alternating row color. I'll select Cell and I'll get rid of all of the borders like before. I'm going to select Column A here and I'm going to have 
under text, have it right justified so it's like that. I'm even going to select row one here. And then under cell, I'm going to change the fill to no fill. Now it looks a little bit more just like it's regular text, except instead of going to all the trouble of having to lay this out or use tabs or something like that. Now here's another use that is tabular data, but it's a little different than just creating your own table. Did you know that if you copy and paste tables from the web, it will appear as a table in pages and then you can edit it. So here I've got some tabular data, just population numbers. Let's go and grab the first 10 rows here and I'm just going to Command C to copy. And note that what I really want is the name of the state plus the census population in the second numerical column here, the 2020 numbers. So now when I paste, it's going to paste it as a table. And I could go in here and I could select this column and then I'm going to Command click to select these others right here and I'm going to delete these selected columns like that and I can continue to customize this. Note another way to do it is to create a table first like this. So I'll create this one here. Then I'm going to select the second cell in the first column and then if I paste here, it's going to paste the data starting right there. But it looks more or less the same. Instead of doing that, I'm actually going to use Edit and then Paste and Match Style. And now when I do that, you can see it doesn't try to include the graphics or to change the font to match the font on the page. Now here's an example of a table that can be used to perform a calculation. So say you're talking about physics here and you're talking about this formula and you want to demonstrate how you can take the initial velocity, acceleration, and time and find the final position of an object. So these are just numbers that can be filled in and then you've got your calculation right here. The calculation looks like this. It's A2 times C2 and then you add half of the acceleration times the time squared to the power of 2 here. So you've got your calculation there. The great thing is is while you're creating your document if you decide that you want to change something, you want to change the acceleration, you could change it here and then when you click away you could see how it updates this. This is also useful if you want to copy and then paste this later on like that. You could have this one have different values and you could see it adjusts there. You don't have to do the calculation yourself. Or it could just be a simple set of numbers that you want to add up. So I've just created a simple table here with just some names and then some numbers here. So let's go ahead and add another row at the bottom and under Format Table I'm going to change this to a footer row. So I have one footer row here. And then I'm just going to use a simple formula that's SUM and then click on the header here so it just selects the whole range, close a parenthesis and I get a total. I could select the entire column here, go to Format Cell and change it to Currency, No Decimals, Add a Thousand Separator. So you get a simple little table here. This is very useful if say you're creating a document, you need this in it but maybe you don't have the final numbers right now. You could just put these placeholder numbers in and then adjust what you want later on like that. Another thing you can use a table for is to create a calendar. So let's just insert a simple table right here. I'm going to extend this to be a few more rows. I'm going to make sure there are seven columns here and then the top you can put like the days of the week. Uh, starting here you can put one and then you do a formula to take this one plus one like that, copy this formula and paste it throughout here and then here you do the last one in that row plus one like that, copy and paste these and then you can see how it just easily creates this nice flow here like that. Then all you need to do is just get rid of the numbers here like that to have it match the month that you want and then get rid of the excess numbers like these and now you've got a little calendar. If you extend this, notice how the numbers stay at the top to the right but I could select all of these and then go to text and I could have it be say left justified and then have it aligned to the top and then you could change the styling and all of that. You can use little text boxes, set those to arrange, stay on page and don't wrap anything and then you could place these in here as bits of text to add to a certain day or just add some graphics to this. I actually have this video from several years ago that goes in more detail about how to create a calendar using a table in pages and you can get really creative with it. But here's something relatively simple. Let's say you just want to create some graph paper. Maybe this is a worksheet that you're creating for students 
and you just want to have a bit of graph paper in the middle of a page or maybe you want to start with some graph paper and then draw on top of it. So let's create a table here. I'll use the simplest kind but then I'm going to go to Format Table and turn off Alternating Row Color. I'm going to then create the number of columns and rows that I want. So let's do it 10 by 10. And if under Format Table I look at Row and Column Size I can set these to something specific. So let's say I want a half an inch for each like that and you can see it looks like a grid right now. And if I select it I can go to Format Cell, select all of the borders there and change the style. Let's go and make this like one point like that. And now I've just got this simple piece of graph paper. And this could just be part of the document but you could also add shapes over it like a curve for instance. Set the format arrange style to no wrap and now I can position this as I want and add text boxes and circles and other elements that I want on top of this grid. You can also use grids like this to represent game boards. So let's go and set this to an 8 by 8 like that and I'll go back in a table here and make sure I set the height and width to something that makes sense like that and I could just put characters in here. Like for instance I can make this into a chessboard. Once I've got all those I'll select all of these here. Let's go to text and center both horizontally and vertically like that. Uh, I could change the font size, font type and all of that and create this game board. I can even draw like arrows on top of that. And if you want you could even go in and add real chess pieces. So I'm going to use Control, Command, Space or you could use Fn and then E to go to the Emoji Special Character Viewer. And depending upon what you have selected for your character sets you could find chess pieces like this and you could add them in there. You could also go ahead and add a simple table like this. Let's make it 3 by 3 and then I'm going to make it roughly square like that. Go to Format, Table, get rid of the alternating rows there. Go to Format, Cell and then let's get rid of all the border styles so no border here. And I'm going to choose the three middle ones and choose the left side set that to 1 pixel. The right side set that to 1 pixel. Choose these three. Set the top side to 1 pixel and then the bottom to 1 pixel as well. And I've got a simple tic-tac-toe board. I can resize it very easily here. I could leave it blank or I could add characters in there and again go to Format then Text and Center and Center like that and have some fun with it. I have this video here that shows you how to make bingo cards in numbers but the same technique can be used on a table in pages as well. And here's one more example. You can use tables to create timelines very quickly. So I'm going to create a simple table here and I've got some basic data I'll paste in. We don't need these two columns here and we certainly don't want it to be alternating row color like that. So now let's adjust the table width. What I can do here is I can grab the line between the rows here and adjust the size. So between 1972 and 1977, five years, let's make that 0.5 inches. 77 to 89 is 12 years. So let's make that 1.2 inches. And then 89 to 97 we'll do 0.8. And then 97 to 2006 we'll make that approximately 0.9 like that. Now I'm going to select all of these. I'm going to go to Format cell and I'm going to select all borders, set border styles to no border and then I'm going to select just one of these columns here, this one and I'll make the left border of that let's say three point. So now I've got something that looks like that and it kind of looks like a timeline but I made it pretty quickly and easily. And you can get creative with that and also create timelines that are horizontal instead of vertical. So these ideas are just to start. I hope they inspire you to think of even more things that you can do with tables and pages. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.